I want my students to realize that the digital is going to be a big part of what they do in the studio, even though they still have the dirt and the dust and the plaster. I'm Kimberly Callis. I am a uh, figurative sculptor and social practice artist. We're at Monmouth University in the sculpture studio. When I was first working in a makerspace, there was a student there who was in engineering. And then there was another student who was a nursing student, and I was there as an artist working, and to me it was really fascinating to work between the fields. So I wanted that opportunity for my students. It's one of the things I really like about 3D printing and emerging technologies, that we can all work together in this space, and maybe through touching shoulders, we come up with better ideas or innovative ideas. The cross-pollination, I feel like it really does foster innovation in the arts, being exposed to the other fields, but also the other fields being exposed to the arts with the Gigabot. We do a couple different projects. We have one that's an interdisciplinary project, and so they have to go out and seek someone in another field that needs a 3D print. I'm Lauren Haug. I'm here pursuing my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Design with a concentration in animation. I'm working right now with a professor we have here on doing prints of DNA, where her students will be able to break apart the actual double helix strand and be able to inspect the pieces that build them and see how they work together, how they link up, and how the actual double helix itself is formed instead of just being able to look at the page in the textbook. I had a student who was able to 3D model and 3D print a molecule that only exists when we make it on this campus. So that was really neat because the students were able to hold the molecule in their hand and look at it, and this is something they've been researching. Another one that was really great was a student was able to 3D print a newly discovered mandible that showed that there was this new evolutionary line in humanoids, and it was so new that it just was still being researched in a lab, but the lab had 3D scanned it, and so we were able to 3D print it for our students to really examine and understand why is this significant what's important about this by physically looking at it, which is what they would be doing in the field. We were able to go on a field trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and we got a little backstage tour of their digital imaging labs. The students just saw all kinds of possibilities in 3D printing and digital scanning, and then how it was being used in all these different fields. The thing that's really great, and I try to impress upon the students, is that sort of entrepreneurial mindset that with this emerging technology and how fast it's changing, that adaptability is going to be really important in their work life. 3D printing has been really important for my students to learn that and to understand that this changes all the time and you have to change with it and you have to figure things out yourself. You have to Google it and, you know, use YouTube and that self-direction is really important and I see a lot of growth in them through doing that. I'm always collecting job descriptions that include 3D printing and 3D scanning and the digital modeling. One of my students could walk right into a medical position with the scanning and the 3D printings. I definitely want to pursue something with a sort of museum aspect to it. I would really like to work with cataloging and organizing and just being able to give these experiences to others through scanning and 3D printing when they take fossil scans and they upload them to databases so people all around the world can just print them out and be able to look at them or bone segments that you would never be able to see unless you hopped on a plane and flew somewhere for six hours. But you can wait six hours and then you have a jaw in front of you. That is just remarkable to me. I want to be involved in that.